The food's really good. One thing I would say to avoid is durian fruit. It's a giant, like, brown, spiky ball. It's really hard. Don't get it or eat it. It's a bad idea. Mangoes are really good. I had this thing called bitter melon. I don't know. Why, why do you eat that? I don't know. Watch out for the bean ice cream. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. But Korean ice cream, that's good. And it's really cheap too. In Australia, there's a lot of words that are different. Fair dinkum. I don't really know what it means, but they use it all, like, all over the place. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what that means. Dinky dye. I, I don't really know what that is either. The boot and the bonnet. So that's for your car. So your trunk is called the boot. And then the hood is called the bonnet. A countertop is called the bench. Elevators are a lift. Trash is the bin. If you want the trick to speaking with an Aussie accent, all you have to do is add an R to the end of like anything that send sounds or ends in an O. So instead of no, it's like no, just like that. Okay. So and you can listen for it. You'll you hear the hidden R in there. But it's interesting because every other word like that has an R actually written in it, then they don't pronounce that. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, Kiwis are fun. So they're from New Zealand and they have their own little accent. It's lower, less nasally. You just say bro a lot. It's like bro, I need some water bro. So that's Kiwi. When you see someone on the street, you just say, hi go mate. It's how are you going mate. We just say, hi go mate. Kind of like one little sound there. So <laughs> that's kind of fun. Hi go mate. Yeah, just kind of get it up in the nose. Hey, fair dinkum. Shall we right? No worries. So there's a lot of really cool animals in Australia. Swan bats are pretty cool. They're, they're kind of like a cross between a gerbil and a dog. And then there's koalas. They have the Royal Botanical Gardens. There are really big bats. The flying fox, I think, is, is what they're called. So they're pretty big. They're fruit bats. And they just kind of roost in the trees there. The birds are pretty exotic looking. And the cockatoo is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's just a white bird and has like the little yellow head thing, but it makes a really annoying sound. And it like serves as an alarm clock sometimes, which was not nice. <laughs> there are lorikeets, which are like rainbow kind of colored birds. And they're just like flying around. We would feed the birds, the cockatoos, and slowly we like got them more comfortable with us. So first they would just like, we put bread out on the window and then they'd come and, and eat the bread. Soon we started like making them work for it a little bit. So like we made them come in a little bit. After a while then we, we like basically trained them and they'd come on our arms, they'd go on our back, on our head. Although we realized that there was a problem eventually because we went a couple days without feeding them. And every morning the birds would come to our window and start tapping on the window because they wanted to get fed. So that was pretty fun. Of course, there are kangaroos. What we usually did was we went to like, there's a ton of like nature preserve reserves or whatever. And so you can go to those and, uh, you know, pet the kangaroos and feed them and stuff. I spent my summers in the suburbs and it was very hot, 40 degrees Celsius. So it's probably like 110 or something. I think it got down to freezing like once. I don't remember any severe storms or anything like that. So pretty safe and, and nice weather. There are some fun like Aussie holidays. Australia Day, which is um, in January. It's summer there. So going to the beach is pretty typical. You go to the beach for Australia Day and have a barbecue. Which is nice. They also have Anzac Day. I can't remember if it was like World War II or something. It, it's a war memorial. One of their traditions is they have Anzac biscuits or cookies. They call cookies biscuits. And they're really, really hard, but they taste pretty good. You have to watch out when you're biting them because you might injure yourself. The culture of the entire country, everyone's really laid back, pretty chill, and, and very accepting of everyone. So that was really, really a cool thing. So it's really a, a neat place to go. I remember riding my bike and I was thinking, I wonder if this can get any worse. And the next thing I knew, this foot just flew past my head. And apparently some guy driving past me stuck his foot out the window, his whole leg. And it was, I don't know if he was trying to kick me in the head as he went by or something, but that's what it seemed like. I'm not sure if he thought that through though, because that would probably hurt him pretty bad as well. I don't think I ever went in a house that had a basement in Australia. The houses seem really, really expensive. There'd be a house, very average size, but because of the location or because of it being in Sydney, it would be close to a million dollars or even over a million dollars. The roads in Sydney are really, really interesting. I felt like I was in traffic a lot. It seems like sometimes that they put the buildings in first and then realized, oh, we got to put roads in. So they just, just tossed them in on top. And so you've got all these different kinds of roads and some of them are dead ends. Some of them twist in interesting ways that I've never seen before, but it was definitely a learning experience. Not only do you drive on the wrong side of the road, 
wrong side of the car, but the roads are very narrow and they've got some interesting curves to them. Time for Thai restaurant. Thai food, it was the best restaurant of my life. It's really diverse and the food's the same way. In my first area, obviously I had to learn how to use chopsticks. <laughs> so that was new, I'd never used them before in my life. My second area, there was a lot of Islander food. They like to feed you a lot. So it's easy to gain weight in an area like that. I remember eating jellyfish tentacles once, that was interesting. Kind of like chewing on rubber bands with flavor. That's what it felt like. They had an interesting sort of cake that was called pavlova. I've never seen anything like it before. If you were to make a cake out of cotton candy, in my opinion, it would be kind of like that. And they also have meat pies a lot. They have pies and they put meat inside of them, all different kinds, really good. And if you ever get the chance to try a Tim Tam, their little chocolate biscuit that they have, those are the best things, so good. It was hard for you to get a response if you'd say, hey, how are you, in American accent, or how are you doing on the street, but if you'd say, hey, how are you going? Or even, how are you going, mate, right? They would answer usually. <laughs> One thing I noticed in Sydney was they're very laid back. You know, there's a lot of stressful things that we encounter in life, but one of the things that they would always like to say is, you know, it should be all right. <laughs> should be okay. And they just keep going and they just be relaxed about it. And they really like that about us, a person as well. If they can go in there and they can talk with them on the street in a relaxed way, like friend to friend, if you go up to them all tense, then it kind of... They're kind of like, what's your deal? Just calm down. <laughs> Life is about being calm. So that's something I admired about their culture. They just pretty much expect people to be courteous, generally speaking. I noticed driving in Australia, people were really, really fair on the roads. They would, they want you to wave and say thank you, you know, but they let you in when you need to get in. They let you out when you need to get out. Australia Day, that was a different holiday. Not used to having that. They were very patriotic on that day. Well, Sydney's a really unique and I think it's a really beautiful city, really nice. Their beaches are something that, that a lot of people really, really like. You'll see a lot of families that just immediately go straight to the beach right after work or school and they'll stay there till the end of the day. And the next day they'll go to work and they'll do the same thing the next day, they love it. There's cool buildings, the Opera House, you get to see that on Finding Nemo and the fish pops up out of the water. That one's a cool one to walk by. Hyde Park in the city is a nice big park that they have there. Sydney's a pretty safe place. They are generally really nice people. I mean, the only person that ever tried to take anything from me, trying to rob me, and I didn't even know it. So I, I don't think that there's very much of a, a threat there as far as crime goes. Of course, you have some areas where it's worse, some areas where it's better. There's a lot of trains, a lot of buses, and there's a place called Coffs Harbor. It's very, very, very beautiful. Definitely have a lot of different phrases that they use that are hard to get used to. Instead of saying, how you doing, a lot, they go down the road and say, how you going? Sometimes you throw you off a little bit, you're not sure what they're asking. They say heaps when they want to say a lot. So they say, I just had heaps of food today, so I'm full. They call the trunk of a car a boot. They call a hood a bonnet. Instead of windshield, it's windscreen. So there's just a few things like that that you have to be aware of. There's some people that live out in the bush that have a little bit of a stronger accent. It's just more of a strong accent, I would say. A lot of the times for meal time, they, they call it tea time, which is kind of random. We're not having tea or anything, but it's just kind of what they do. I'm just so grateful for everything that I learned with you. And I'm grateful for the people that you are. I have a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in all of you. And I pray that we'll be able to continue to be good friends.